Hey everyone, welcome to Breakout Wednesday for September 15, 2021. It's currently 3 p.m. on the West Coast, 5 p.m. on the East Coast. First of all, remember this is never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is simply a video blog on how one trader sees the market and everyone needs to take responsibility for their own decisions. Had a week off last week, headed up to Exmouth with the family, had some good times. Feel sorry for those that have been locked down for like 13 weeks now in Sydney and a bit less in Melbourne. Um, and hopefully that is going to be coming to an end shortly for you guys. Uh, before I get into it, a bit of housekeeping, based on a bunch of feedback, um, uh, the structure is going to change ever so slightly. The first 10, 11, 12 minutes or so every week is always going to be on stocks. Um, and then I'm going to flip to crypto, blockchain, technology type stuff. Um, for those who are not interested in crypto, I'm respectful of that. Simply uh, press the off button um, when I start flipping over to blockchain chat around the 10 to 12 minute mark each week. Uh, that is just based off feedback, okay? Um, and the other thing is, I'm pretty proud that this is a free service. Um, I'm always dubious of traders who call themselves traders and then charge 600 bucks a, week, a month for, you know, um, for info. Uh, and, um, but I am raising some money for a charity that I like. I used to spend a lot of time, uh, a bit of time um, in the Tarkin region of Tassie. Um, I'm doing a trail race there in Feb. I want to raise some money for these guys. There's a rainforest there that's getting, you know, chopped down and logged in. I'm not going to go into it too much. I'm also respectful for those who, who don't agree with me that there should be money raised for this charity. But if you, instead of, um, if you do appreciate these talks, um, if you get some out, something out of it, um, you learn something, um, then the small donations to this charity, which I'm raising money for, um, it would be deeply appreciated. I will leave a link at the bottom of um, every talk for the next kind of few months. All right, let's get on with the stonks. Uh, Long-term uptrend still in, is still intact, okay? We've been going down for four or five days in a row on the NASDAQ, but still an uptrend, okay? Maybe it's going to kind of retrace down to the 50-day moving averages somewhat and bounce. Who knows? Uh, it's not really what I concentrate on. I'm always wary, though, that you know, which is a pretty overheated market and we could totally have a massive pullback at any, any point in time. Um, certainly the All Lords uh, have been going sideways a bit longer. They've kind of made a lower high here, um, taken out this low and just chopping sideways, slashed down a little bit. Interesting to see what happens and I'm being a bit careful at the moment. I've, um, I've kind of raised a bit of cash, um, had some, had some uh, stocks stopped out of and, um, you know, taking some profits on some, losses on some, and have a bit more cash than normal, which is a good and bad thing, right? So um, now let's just get on with it. What's happening in the market at the moment? The lithium and uranium stocks are flying, okay? Um, missed last week, which was a shame, but there was a lot of flying stocks, okay? BOE is one, PDN, the old PDN that for those trading, you know, on the, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, this was the darling of the market, right? Um, uh, even Bannerman uh, flying. Um, we had a big breakout today from a nice base in PSC. Uh, that is just classic stuff. Um, CXO flying, um, ERA flew, uh, and okay, so these guys are all in in the same space. Okay, um, we still got downward pressure on BH, Rio. Okay, Fortescue. So you know the big boys. Um, the iron ore heavy uh, mining companies are getting hammered still, whereas the iron ore, I mean the um, uranium and, and lithium companies are flying, all right? Um, there's a little bit of signs of early, early, early signs of turnarounds in some oil stocks. Okay, um, a fake out here on beach um, runs up, tests this resistance and then uh, falls back today. So. I'm gonna be watching the uh, these on oil energy stocks pretty closely um, to see if this can now form a really tight right hand side here and then break up out of these bottoming patterns. Okay, um, some good money can be made when you pick those bottom base bottom basing patterns, and so gonna keep an eye on those. But they are very immature patterns at this stage. Okay, um, it is hard right now because uh, a lot of those lithium and Uranium stocks are just that hot and have just raced up that much. You can't, you know, you can't chase them. If you've missed the move, so be it. Wait for them to base again. Chill out a little bit. Um, they always give more opportunities eventually. Okay, and there will be some sector rotation. Who knows? You know, it's like if you look at the moment. There's, you know, the, a lot of the money has been 
you know, the market hasn't tanked that much and there's been a lot of sectors going up. There's been a lot of sector rotation, right, into the uranium and lithium stocks again for this next push upwards for them, okay? Um, now, I'm just going to go through three past trades and I'm picking out three that um, kind of went down over the last few weeks, okay? Um, I don't want to just talk all day about winners because you don't learn as much from that sort of stuff. So let's just look at a few. UWL, when I say went down, I mean, um, obviously it's gone up a shitload since... Since we jumped in, since I jumped in, but it had um, a big pullback yesterday. Had a few messages from people um, about it. Now, first of all, um, whenever I look too much at these long-term positions intraday, I do something stupid, right? Uh, so I had no idea this was going down on this day. Um, didn't have the faintest until I got like three messages from people freaking out. Um, and you know, my plan is to sell this on a close below the 50 day, which is this green line. It hasn't done that yet. Uh, I just, you know, um, yeah, it went down. I mean, it's the stock market. These things happen. Uh, these things happen, right? At least it didn't gap down like 80%, you know, which can happen. Uh, and so I didn't really get stressed or care too much. I mean, you know, these things happen, shit happens. Um, if this closes below the 50 day line, I get out of the, that trade. Um, I've obviously scaled out of bits of it along the way that I've talked about, but the final exit will be a close below that 50 day line. If it happens, it might bounce from there, okay? Who the hell knows, right? Um, so that's that. I tend not to just freak out about this stuff. I mean, it's, it's out of my power, it's out of my control. It's no point um, getting in a huff about things, you know, EML, um, fake out, okay, this is a loser, right, faked out here, came down, stopped me out here, okay, now, traditionally speaking, where would you have stop losses, some people have them down here, some people have them here, so, you know, there's so many different places, I have my tight, this little pivot area here, just came down, fell, um, fell out, and it's a very, very quick, small, not that painful loss, right, in at 421, 422, something like that, um, out here, I think 404, um, approximately. Small, quick loss, um, they're the best losses. Um, better than that, than a big, fat loss. And the other one, LRK, and you know, when I say I'm talking about some stocks that have been gone down, obviously, I've once again been in LRK for a long time and I've done well on it, but it closed below its 50-day line this week, which is the green line. I had to give a bit back. Remember, I had a little ad here, which lost. Um, all these buyers here are winning, obviously, but um, it's closed here below its 50 day line. I sell the next day at open and that is that, okay? Um, end, of, end of the trade on LRK, okay? Um, now, just quickly, before I get onto some new setups and some other stuff, there is a scan I do, I mean, I did a talk um, called My Favorite Scans, which talks about scans, but let's say like there's a day I'm super busy, you know, I've got some family stuff on or whatever. The scan I do every day, but uh, with no exceptions. Like, I legit think that I've done this scan every day for well over a decade. And you might say, oh shit, this guy has no life. I mean, probably a good point, but um, it is it is the discipline needed, I think, to, to be a long-term winner um, as a trader, okay? Um, and it's just simply, this is the one, tri-point resistance, 30-day breakout, increasing volume for four days, TCI break up out of this channel, uh, which is a pretty pro-trader function, okay? this TCR stuff and the tri-point resistance stuff is just super powerful and so I just do that I have these filters set really low that's only 30,000 there um, and I do that scan okay now today that brings up 189 stocks now it does not take me long to get to 189 stocks okay? I just do it super fast and I don't and I look at this thing uh, I look at you know the major breaks and if you do this every day, it is absolutely impossible to not have your finger on the pulse of the market, okay? Um, I know what sectors are hot. I know what's setting up. I know what's working. You know, I know 100% um, right, where the sector rotations are happening. Okay, here's a tri-point resistance one that it found on ALC. Okay, that's totally a stock that I'm 100% watching very carefully because there's a lovely base forming here. Okay, long-term uptrend, lovely base kind of being compressed against all these long-term moving averages and it's now it's basing here. Okay, and so if I get rid of all these drawings, this just came up in a tri-point resistance scan. You can see this black line across there finding that resistance. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch more setups that's found, but when I do that scan every day, what my point is, my, my finger is on the pulse. I know what's happening in the market. I know where the money is. Uh, I know where the money's flowing into, and I know what stocks I want to be in, in, okay? And what sectors I want to be aggressively piling into when good setups come along, okay? So that's that. I'm not going to go through all those all those stocks. Um, 
Uh, the next thing is a few setups, okay, I'm looking at. Now, this is interesting, AIA, um, you know, obviously uh, Auckland International Airport, right? Um, and so big base, um, and I swear by big bases, okay? I, it does make me nervous being in the transport sector with COVID. Uh, obviously, there's talks of Australia opening up um, and travel resuming uh, even within internationally. Okay, who knows what's going to happen in the Hermit Kimberton of Western Australia, by the way, but let's just leave, I won't go into that. Um, and that's just a massive base, okay? I'm not going to count the weeks, but shit, you know, there's like, I don't know, 20 weeks maybe um, of base in. And, uh, you know, Auckland International Airport, it's a bit like Sydney. Uh, it has an okay business uh, and there's cash flow there just waiting for them as soon as they're functional again. Um, properly functional again and that is just a nice base. From a pure technical technical perspective, there's absolutely no reason why I wouldn't take that. There's been so many times over the years where I've let my fundamental wishy-washy opinions get in the way of a good technical setup, okay? And so AIA for me, I'm gonna take it. Um, you know, I'm gonna live with the loss if it loses then, so be it, right? This is a risky business. LME, okay? Um, this is a decent base in a rel relatively illiquid stock, okay? Um, this is a recent IPO, um, they dumped, and um, and now it's forming this nice base, okay? That is that is a, that is a nice base, okay? And so, uh, watching that one carefully, you've gone into it, um, read a lot about it, it's got some decent growth and happening, growth factors happening in the company, so, but um, uh, the main thing is it's, it's base, okay? So obviously it got dumped after IPO, and then it's got it shipped together, it was probably overpriced on IPO day anyway, and then, uh, and now it's found a bit of liquidity, found a bit of support, failed to break lower, it's a nice sideways base. And so um, the risk reward on that, on a break to me is pretty good, okay? If you take 100 bases like that, uh, I'd say 60 to 70 of them are gonna be blowout winners, okay? And if I control my risk, then I'm gonna do very well. Okay, LYC I'm looking at, okay? This is that one that we traded, I traded back here on this breakout, and it was a really nice one. And I'm not gonna trade this, this is just too much of a run up from these lows. I really wanted to just store here, fall back down. I'm just, I'm watching it though. It can really move that stock. I would love to just aggressively pile in on a break, but I can't do that. Um, I need a nice sideways base like this. I need it to really tighten up for me to get into it, which that's not. But I'm certainly watching it in case it doesn't break out and comes back down and base it a bit longer. And another one, which is a real specky piece of crap is, is WMC, okay? This came up in a Frank's pattern scan, this one here, okay? Um, Okay, scan, to, um, one sec. Okay, there it is, right? I just wanted to quickly do the scans, you can see it. So, you know, um, this has got a lot of like selling days. Like if you look at these bars, red bar, red bar, red bar, out the yin yang, okay? And so, um, you know, that's generally not a good thing. Uh, a lot of distribution days in this box. Um, if it was hardcore selling, you'd expect the price to be going down a lot further, but it's been just cruising sideways. Um, and for a spec trade, okay, a lot of spec trades have been working lately. Uh, um, that is that has potential um, to explode on a break of 1.1. So I'm watching WMC, um, and I'll be looking at the order book and getting involved in that if it all looks attractive as it breaks out. That is it for stocks for today. For those who hate crypto, um, have a have a good one. Catch you next week. All right. For those who are interested in what's happening in the, in the blockchain world, um, let's get into it. And so every week I'm going to talk about something different. Um, this week I'm just going to um, uh, chat about DeFi, okay? DeFi stands for Decentralized Finance and most people have no idea what that means most likely. It is more or less um, um, these massive open source software doing the job of banks, okay? Um, and uh, it is a way for uh, you know an individual to take um, charge of their finances and kind of become the bank, okay? Um, and I think there's sorry, I think there's a lot of um, uh, cryptos out there where people hear about you know Solana or Avalanche um, or some of these uh, or a lot of these tokens, and people have no idea what they do, okay? They just think that that these awesome coins that they can trade, and they are, but they also have real things behind them, right? Um, here's Celsius, okay, Celsius is a centralized, um, it's not a decentralized thing, so it's not really a, a true, um, you know, uh, you know, blockchain th thing that I'm kind of interested in, but this is just an example, okay. Um, 
it is um, where a place you can go and let's say you own Ethereum, or own Bitcoin, or own any a bunch of other crypto cryptos, and you can earn interest on it. Okay, currently you can earn 5.35% on your ETH, 6.2% um, on your Bitcoin. Um, if you have stable coins, for example, um, you know you own uh, say um, some US dollar stable coins, you can earn eight nine percent, something like that. Okay, and so obviously that beats whatever the bank's giving us right now. Um, and what you're really doing is supporting the network, right? You are locking up money, saying, hey, um, I believe in ETH, I'm going to lock my money up, um, I'm going to provide a little bit of liquidity uh, for Celsius platform, I'm going to support I'm going to support the whole thing, I'm not going to sell it, instead I'm going to collect interest, sit back and lock my money away, okay? Um, and that is the most simple form of DeFi, simply earning interest from a centralized place like Celsius. However, it does get a lot slap better and interesting than that and i'm going to quickly touch on um what i've been getting heavily involved in this year um is kind of the decentralized um uh, apps okay and so this is a decentralized app called sushi swap all right and sounds crazy um it's uh it's a fork of uniswap and i am and sushi swap is made primarily on the uh, polygon blockchain okay and so i'm just going to go inside this app and, and show uh, people that the, what is happening um, traditionally speaking we get uh, if, let's say we have a hundred grand we give it to the bank and we just park it in the bank right um, the bank gives us sweet uh, sweet ore for that cash maybe 0.25 of a cent and then they take that hundred grand and they loan it out to people for mortgages um, loans um, whatever okay banks also obviously make money from um, you know they obviously make money on the margins of their loans but they also make money from a whole bunch of other places such as fees um, you know such as all things like credit cards travel cards um, you know all sorts of different loans not just mortgages from homes um, and a whole bunch of fees credit card fees bank fees all sorts of little hidden fees all over the all over the shop okay um, what this is pretty much doing is taking all those fees um, that the banks charge um, and letting you earn those fees somehow, okay? Um, that is one part of it. So, for example, let's say you own ETH, you can go um, to a decentralized platform and you can provide liquidity um, in ETH, in, into a, you know, it's usually a pair, ETH versus something else, like ETH versus Bitcoin or ETH versus Matic or um, ETH versus USDC, which is like a, um, a, a US dollar stable coin. Um, and you will just provide liquidity for those two cryptos, okay? Um, and then you will earn a percentage of, of the fees of all the transactions that's placing. And what's that, that, that are, all the transactions that are going on? What that involves is um, you just have to take that those coins out of action. You're not actively trading them. You're locking away in the blockchain on SushiSwap um, and you are just sitting back and earning some fees, okay? That's, you know, that's providing liquidity. But then you can take it a step further and jump into some, you know, what's called farming, farms, okay? Um, SushiSwap isn't just on Polygon um, blockchain, by the way. It's also on Ethereum. Um, and I believe on Avalanche, um, for those who are deep into this stuff. Um, and so I just jumped into this to show an example of some farms. Okay, so once you provided liquidity, you start earning, um, you know, percentage of the fees. And then once you jump into farms, you are literally... Um, you know, um, uh, providing and uh, locking those assets away. You can get out whenever you want, right? But you're providing liquidity and you're staking these and you're supporting these networks, okay? Um, and then SushiSwap will use um, the, the cryptos that you've locked away for, um, you know, for their decks, for trading, for back and forth, for liquidity providing and all that sort of stuff, okay? Um, and there's all, and there's a huge interest rate market um, on the on the back end in these dexes okay um and you can see the interest rates here okay they go they start at say one percent two percent they go up to many 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 thousands of percent okay for a lot of the degenerate coins out there um and you know obviously the best way to do it is to be in coins that you believe in um ones you think the future of them is good um and you literally whack them into this farm um, and you earn passive income, okay? Sushi Swap pays you in Sushi tokens, um, and when you're using it on the Polygon network, it will pay you in Matic tokens too, which is the coin name for um, Polygon, and 
Um, and then you can convert those back to Bitcoin or ETH or even US dollar um, stable coins. And then you can take it back to your Binance account and you can withdraw it into real money. Okay, this is actually convert to real money. And so this has a lot of uh, repercussions for people um, with a lot of money sitting around that they want to um, actually put to work instead of sitting in a bank. Or let's say you need to have six months off active trading in the stock market or whatever, um, you can actually put your money to work passively. Okay, um, it's not... It is open to risk though, and there are a few there are a few different risks. One is um, that you know this whole thing could collapse. Okay, um, if you're not a believer in blockchain, don't use it. But but you're open to attacks on networks. Okay, um, and you're also open to something called impermanent loss. Okay, and so impermanent loss is best described um, by let's say uh, you have you're in what, a farm or across here. Um, let's say um, ETH versus Ethereum versus a US dollar stable coin, okay? Um, and let's say ETH goes to the moon um, and the US dollar, st US dollar stable coin obviously stays pegged to one dollar, okay? Um, these, these, farms, these, these farms need to keep 50% ETH and 50% US dollar coin. So it will rebalance that for you and actual, it will actually sell down, sell down your ETH and buy up your US dollar coin. Um, and so you would have been a lot better off just holding the ETH, okay? Um, the flip side is that like if, if ETH goes sideways or down and you're in one of these farms, um, the opposite happens, okay, and your loss gets minimalized. And in a sideways market, um, it just chops sideways the value of your liquidity tokens and you earn the interest, okay. No matter what, you earn the interest, okay. It's just um, you're also um, uh, susceptible to the price. Um, there are also options of, of not even, uh, of just literally being in um, US dollar stable coins and US dollar, you know, variant stable coins in order to earn interest just on, on an asset that's literally just going to go pretty much sideways, okay? Then you're open to the, if you, if you use Aussie, Aussie dollars to convert that, you're open to those risks um, because you converted Aussie dollars to US dollars and then and then started staking out your US dollars, right? But, so you do have that risk, but um, it's a much more mineralized, okay? And so um, there is a whole world here, okay? I've just touched on this a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, and I don't even know if I did a good job touching on it, but um, there are so many different blockchains. There's Solana, there's Avalanche, Okay, there's Phantom, there's Cosmos, Cosmo, shit, probably said that wrong, Atom, uh, you just call it. And, um, and there's a lot of opportunities out there to make great returns using DeFi. Um, this is when people say um, there's a lot happening in blockchain, uh, in crypto and blockchain. This is, this is a huge one. This is one you, you know, user case for crypto and blockchain. There are others. Next week, I'm going to talk about gaming, okay, and how blockchain is absolutely changing um, the way uh, the gaming world, uh, and that the companies that are not getting involved in blockchain and the NFT world um, are going to get totally left behind. Um, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Chat next week. Cheers.